The original Dead Island contained four playable characters and supported up to four player co-op. Dead Island Riptide had five characters and four player co-op, and in both games, each character had three unique skill trees as well as their own fury mode. In Dead Island 2, well, things are a little bit different. You've got six playable characters, three player co-op, and zero skill trees. So, with Dead Island 2 just around the corner, here is everything you need to know about all six characters, as well as the new skill system, all in one handy video. Now, just like the previous games, each character is tied to a separate save file, so if you want to switch characters, you have to start over from the beginning, and therefore, it's pretty important to choose the right character for you. Now, the devs at Dan Buster Studios have really stressed the fact that all six characters have unique dialogue and personalities, and they were all written by different people. Now, on the gameplay side of things, each character starts off with different base stats and has two unique traits that give them a slightly distinctive playstyle from the get-go. These traits are referred to as innate skills. So let's go through all the characters, starting with Jacob. An anti-hero with a rockstar flair, Jacob's offbeat charm is paired with a reckless disregard for self-preservation. When his beloved mum passed, they spelt mum correctly by the way, this successful London stockbroker left everything behind to follow his dream of being a Hollywood stuntman. Now, his quips and Shakespearean quotes fall on undead ears as he revels in being a slayer in hell -A. Lovely. Now, like I said, every character has two innate skills that are unique to them. These skills cannot be changed, cannot be replaced, cannot be swapped out. They take up their own slots, and they do not interfere with the rest of the skill card system. So Jacob's two innate skills are Feral, also referred to as Frenzy, which is kind of confusing, and Feral states that Jacob gets a stackable minor damage boost when attacking in quick succession, and his second skill is Critical Gains. Jacob gets a moderate critical damage boost while his stamina is low, Critical hits regain stamina. For those of you who have played Dead Island Riptide before, Jacob's playstyle kind of reminds me of John Morgan, where you're encouraged to just keep swinging as much as possible, kill as many zombies as fast as possible, and you're rewarded for not letting up. Next up, we've got Amy. Amy is a quick-witted Paralympian who has found something even better than her runner's high. Zombie slaying. The risks keep her wide, the success keeps her pumped, and every battle is almost a puzzle to solve on the fly, like an obstacle course to keep her mind sharp. Laid back, focused, and calm, very little can dent her California chill. Amy's two innate skills are Relief Pitcher. Amy regains stamina when hitting a zombie with a weapon throw, and her second skill is Divide and Conquer. Amy gets a minor damage boost when she attacks isolated zombies. So in terms of her playstyle, she's pretty much a combination of Shin Mei and Logan. She's athletic, got good stamina, she's great at assassinating single targets, with a little throwing bonus in there as well. So if you're running low on stamina when approaching a zombie, just toss a weapon at them and finish them off with another. Ryan is our next character, and when he was originally introduced in 2014, he was introduced as a firefighter. Now, in Dan Buster's version of the game in 2023, he is a stripper dressed as a firefighter. So here we go. There's much more to this exotic dancer than his rippling pecs. Ryan has a stubborn streak a mile wide, pessimistic sarcasm as dry as the Sahara, and an indomitable heart. He's on a mission to get back to his little brother, left behind in Fresno before the outbreak, and nothing alive or dead, is gonna stop him getting home. Ryan's two innate skills are Retaliation, Ryan gets a moderate force boost when using Block or Dodge to avoid an attack, and Seesaw, Ryan regains health each time he knocks down a zombie. Very much sounds reminiscent of our boy Sam B, even though Sam B is in the game as a side character. So Ryan blocks attacks like a tank, he's rewarded for doing that, gets a little force boost, uses that to knock over zombies, and keeps them on the ground just like Sam B. Would. And although the characters aren't limited to specific weapons in this game, you're probably going to want to use like a big two-handed blunt weapon for that extra force boost. Make way for Danny. Hailing from the mosh pits of County Cork in Ireland, Danny is a headstrong rockabilly brawler with a foul mouth and a twisted sense of humor. She plows through zombies the way I plowed your mum last night. She plows through zombies the way she plowed through the opposing roller derby teams pre-zompocalypse, with a grin and a yelled promise to feck you up. 
Danny's two innate skills are Thunderstruck, also referred to as Thunderous. Again, I don't know what's going on with his names. Uh, Thunderstruck says that Danny's heavy attacks trigger a forceful explosion on impact. And Bloodlust. Danny regains health when slaying multiple zombies in quick succession. So I guess it kind of sounds like her playstyle is a hybrid between Jacob and Ryan. You know, she delivers some big attacks that deal AoE damage, and you regain your health from killing multiple enemies at once, which is quite handy when you've got AoE damage. Next up, this is Carla. She is my wife. No one else is allowed to play her. Carla is a mechanic and a motorcycle stunt rider unfazed by the rings of fire, jumps over ravines, and mid-air flips. So the Zompocalypse has barely made her break a sweat. Armed with street smarts, an outgoing disposition, and boundless physical confidence, she's embraced the challenges of slaying her way through Halle with enthusiasm. Carla's innate skills are Dig Deep, where she gets a moderate toughness boost while her health is critical, and Mosh Pit. She gets a minor damage boost when close to multiple zombies. Absolute sand. MB style tank just like Ryan but with less emphasis on blocking and dodging and more so just going up to groups of zombies and destroying them while not being too scared of taking the occasional hit from the group. <sighs> Unfortunately, I have to move on to the last character Bruno. Bruno is a calculating hustler who always has a plan, both for pulling off heists on big time scammers and spammers before the Zompocalypse, and for taking down the undead now. Born and raised on the streets of LA, he's always hidden his lethal knife skills behind his disarming Californian charm. Those skills ensure that his targets won't talk about Bruno. No, no. Br Bruno, no? Bruno no no? No no. Bruno's innate skills are Backstab, Bruno gets a moderate damage boost when attacking zombies from behind, and Rapid Reprisal, boost Bruno's agility and heavy attack charges when he avoids attacks with a block or dodge. So I guess if anything, Bruno is kind of the Shin Mei style assassin who excels in sneaking up on zombies, but he's also tough enough to deal with face-to-face -face confrontations, and it'll be interesting to see if ranged attacks also receive a damage boost when executed from behind. Okay, so we've done a little overview of each character, and now it's time to talk about the new skill card system. So rather than a skill tree system, Dead Island 2 has a skill deck system. And this is different from your typical skill tree in two major ways. Firstly, most of the cards are universal, which means they can be equipped by any of the six characters. And secondly, you can switch these cards at any time you like, even mid-air, you know, rather than just being locked into a static skill tree. These skill cards can be obtained from bosses, random zombies, or even found on the ground. And there are four different categories, ability cards, survivor cards, slayer cards, and Newman cards. Ability cards, as you can probably tell from the name, allow you to perform specific attacks. You'll see there are five slots, with each one representing a different subcategory. By the way, just for the people who are like me and tend to listen to YouTube videos while you're cooking or cleaning, this is the part where you're probably going to want to go back to the video and pause occasionally. I'm going to be putting up every single skill card that we know of on the screen, just a description of what it does, but I'm not going to be reading out every single one out loud because that would take a bit too much time. So feel free to pause wherever you have to and let's get into it. The first of five ability slots is the defense slot, where you can switch between abilities like block or dodge, but you can't have both equipped at the same time. That is how all five of these ability card slots work, by the way. Like with the second slot, which is jump kicks, you have to choose between flying kick or drop kick, but you can't have both equipped at the same time. The third third ability slot is the special attack slot, which gives you a strong ability like War Cry, Dash Strike, or Ground Pound. The fourth ability slot is going to take a little bit of explaining, and it is known as the Autophage skill slot? Nobody has any idea what the Autophage meter in the bottom right of the screen actually does, but it does seem to be tied in with Fury Mode. I'm guessing that Dead Island 2's zombie virus affects your body's process of replenishing and recycling cell parts, which is a process known as Autophagy. Perhaps the more infected you become, the more powerful your Fury attacks become, or the faster you're able to build Fury, probably with some pretty adverse side effects. Now it is worth noting that Fury Duration and Fury Regain are two different stats that you can increase for your character, so perhaps the whole autophagy system will tie into that, or maybe you can just use it to add a fury building effect to existing special attacks. Anyway, on screen right now is every single autophagy skill that we know of so far, and you'll notice that something that all of them have in common is that they're all centered around boosting your ability to build fury. And that takes us right to the fifth ability card slot, 
Fury cards. Just like in the original game, you build up your rage or fury meter by killing zombies, and once it's full, you can unleash the fury you have equipped. This is basically your ultimate attack. Now the biggest difference between the previous games and this one is that in Dead Island 2, any character can use any fury mode and you can switch between them at any time, allowing you to harness the powers of the infected and give them a taste of their own medicine. The four fury attacks that we know of so far are the Crusher Ground Pound, which is basically a super version of the regular Ground Pound, Spitting Cobra, which allows you to spit poison projectiles just like the Slobber Zombie does, Scream, which does exactly what you'd expect and weakens nearby zombies with a loud screech, and this one, which I can't seem to find a name for, but it's the one where you use your bare hands to tear the zombies to pieces. Right, so that is everything for the five ability card slots. Now let's move on to survivor cards. Now these survivor cards seem to act as a passive buff for your ability cards. So for example, there is the Vivisuction survivor card, which upgrades your dash strike special attack so that it now heals you while still dealing damage. Another example would be Quake, which adds extra force to your ground pound. Now because of this, you of course do need to have your cards in sync, like there's no use in having a survivor card that boosts the force of your ground pound if you don't even have ground pound equipped in the first place. It makes sense, but it also means that if you're switching your ability cards, you're probably also going to have to go through and switch out your survivor cards. On screen right now is every single survivor card I've managed to pull from the depths of the internet, but it's pretty hard to find some of this information and huge thank you to Oni Zombies, a fellow content creator who managed to play the game early and gave me some of this information. Now there are a few little things that might be standing out to you right now. First of all, there's an autophagy skill in here. No idea how that makes sense with the autophagy system. Maybe once again you can enhance any kind of card including survivor cards to produce an autophagy effect, but there that is. You'll also notice that some of these are geared towards special attacks like the ground pound, while others are more towards your defensive abilities like block or dodge, and lastly and perhaps most importantly, some of these are character exclusive. So if you were wondering if there was anything besides the two innate skills that were exclusive to characters, well here you have it. And this applies not only to some of the survivor cards, but also the next category, Slayer cards. Now I'm not going to lie, at first these Slayer cards seem really similar to survivor cards, and I found it hard to tell the difference, but they actually work really well together. So let's say you really like the dash strike ability, and you want to build your character around that ability. Well first of all you can equip equip that vivisuction survivor card we talked about earlier, but you can also stack on top of that the slayer card hammer fist, which when combined with dash strike will unleash a strike capable of launching zombies into the stratosphere. Another example is the flare up slayer card which adds a fiery effect to your ground pound ability, so you can build different versions of these abilities and of course some of these are character exclusive. So this could theoretically mean that there are specific unique versions of abilities out there that can only be performed by one or two characters. And I say one or two because, as you've probably noticed so far, the examples we have here are not exclusive to one character, but in fact to two characters of similar playstyles. And overall, that seems to be what really distinguishes Slayer cards from Survivor cards. Slayer cards are more focused on playstyle and categories of attacks like MAME, which can only be performed with sharp weapons. As well as something like Deadeye, which is specifically for throwing items. And finally, we have the category of Newman cards, which nobody knows anything about. Nobody from the media has been able to access these yet, but there is speculation that Newman cards are required late in the game and will have some pretty powerful effects, which would make sense since there are only two slots, and also because Newman pretty much just means divine power. And there you have it, that is everything we currently know about Dead Island 2's playable characters and the skill deck system. It's a little bit of a double-edged sword in my opinion, like it's cool that you're not locked into specific weapon types and you can switch things up whenever you want, but I'm also slightly concerned that the playstyle of each character may not be distinctive enough. With that being said, let me know which of the five characters you're going to roll with in Dead Island 2, are you choosing based on appearance, personality or playstyle, and also I just really hope you enjoyed this video, it uh, took a lot of effort to put together all this information and uh yeah i just i hope it was helpful cheers